Good morning, lovely people. <laughs> so here, I'm lucky again, the sun's come out for me. Um, and uh, here I am in my garden with your Yoga Solutions Live on a Tuesday morning, 10 o'clock, with me, Mark J. Aquaviva. So let's see what we've got. Ah, two questions already. So, um, inquiry, um, more on that rib spiral staircase. Love that. Oh, thanks, inquiry. Um, diagonal relationships, uh, trick and ask. Okay, maybe. We can do some twisting, maybe. Um, and, oh, Mark, working with spirals, please. Certainly, mate. Okay, let's get going. Um, so, uh, when you come online, uh, do say hi and uh, let me know you're here. And um, yes, I'll get going. What, what to say? <sighs> Working with spirals. Hmm. Well, spirals. Um, it, it's uh, it's quite a well used term in yoga. Um, I think I think the um, I think it's used a lot in Anusara yoga, I think. Um, the, the word itself, I, I believe, is around circling and that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> and it's used a lot in good, in good teaching, I think. Uh, because, and the reason it's, it's good is because it honors the way the, the, the body works. Um, the body isn't a linear mechanism. Um, there may be some linear relationships uh, when, when you're looking for support, but the way the body, um, the way the structure moves, the way the joints move, the way, the, the way we are uh, organized throughout is in this sort of double helical kind of arrangement. Um, starting, you know, from the d DNA up, really. So, um, and and the the way I see things is is uh, the, the the body works in patterns, you know, works in in um, it's a very efficient way of doing things because the the brain doesn't have to keep um, too many different uh, templates of how things work, and. Um, we are built from these sort of spiral patterns uh, from ground level up, from DNA up. And um, our movements need to, need to honor that fact. And, and the way the joints are organized is, is, is to do with that. So uh, when we're looking at spirals and twists and rotations. Um, uh, hi, Abigail. Um, yes, when we're looking at um, uh, spirals, working from this sort of sense of looking for the for the natural natural um, flow of things, I guess you know, uh, it's a, it's a whole body action, and and what we tend to do in in um, when when we're deliberately organising the body into particular movements and shapes is we we sort of isolate movements, um, and we're even taught to do that as a as a way of um, understanding the body, and then it's, it has its value, you know, to to understand, for example, that um, the rotation of the hand, the pronation of the hand, is isn't so much that something you do with your shoulder; it's more something you do with your forearm, okay? Because you have two bones in there that spiral over each other, that turn over each other, and um, so so it can be useful to isolate movements. Because uh, if, for example, you're doing something like dog pose, you know, and, and you see this quite regularly, um, when people uh, push down to push the ground away to make the shape, um, it if, it, if it happens in the whole of the arm, then you tend to get a dysfunctional, not dysfunctional, just a not very comfortable shoulder relationship. So um, if you understand that the... A majority of pronation, the rotation of the arm, happens in the forearm through these, um, uh, what's it called, radius and ulna, um, rotating over each other. 
then putting the hands down becomes a more of a natural response, natural action. So the action of um, touching the ground becomes less of a push and more of a, a touch. And um, that allows for the support to spiral up in the other direction through the arm bones. Because, um, you know, there's two directions of support. There's the, there's the um, outward action. And then there's how support comes back through you. And they, they both have spiral qualities. And they both have whole body sort of sensations that go with it. Um, but sort of... Uh, yes, allow, allowing, allowing yourself to investigate individual aspects... So, um, for, for purposes of, I don't know, simplifying, I guess, um, the purposes of understanding what's possible is one aspect. So, there's the inward rotation, introversion, yes, which is a whole body action. And, um, and it will lead to a sort of a rounding out things. But if you kind of do it in dysfunctional ways, then you're sort of, um, getting involved with the with the action more than the purpose, and um, the purpose is to support yourself, and that starts with the hands, I think. Um, and then there's investigating what happens in the other direction, and it's just and you know in the same way it's, it's useful to investigate individual actions, you know, um, isolating actions to see how they can go. It's um, hi Kishori. It's um, also useful to, in, uh, to investigate individual whole body movements so that there is um, a kind of internal rotation to engage with touch, which may or may not go through the shoulders. It's kind of better if it doesn't do that too much. It doesn't really need to. The arm bones are led in that direction anyway. And the whole body... Uh, being allowed to follow that will lead to a sort of rounding out experience. And um, the, the, thing, the thing that makes life a little complicated is when you hold a position in your body, say, say you think your back is supposed to be straight, for example, and you engage with the, the action w that would round you out. So the, the action of doing that would round you out, but, but you're sort of holding yourself away from it. So the two things together create conflict. If you can wholeheartedly engage with the one direction, so the placing of the hands down is a sort of pronation action that um, will, is more introverted, as in it moves you into your insides and rounds you out. And then uh, change direction. So that the the action then becomes extroversion, as in how do I engage outwards? And it's more of a action in the sh in the arm bones, for example. But it's not it's not entirely isolated. That you, it, to to do that as an isolated action is going to again uh, do something strange to your body. But if you understand that the support that you're getting back from your hands comes through your shoulders then it sort of makes sense. And I don't know if you can see, the whole spine tends to get involved with that action. So if you, if you can allow the internal rotation that um, spirals inwards, yeah. introversion, and, and that generally gives you the sense of support from your touch. And then if from that support, you then engage with your touch, in extroversion, external rotation, a movement outwards into space, and allow the spine to follow that movement as well. Between those two things, you start to find um, ways of supporting yourself in movement that are responsive to touch, the act of touching the ground with your hands and feet, and the response uh, looking for support, and then the response of what you do with that touch to move in space, which is an outward feeling, leading more to generally to extension sort of responses. Uh, 
So although that's uh, not so much the uh, spiral thing that um, uh, Mark was talking about or, or inquiry, um, it, it, it's kind of two spirals together. It's the double helix thing. So you end up supported through the center, which is kind of what we're aiming for. So to um, honor that, um, let, let's see what happens when we take it into twisting. I'll, I'll stay sitting so I can, so, so you can be sort of close and you can see what I'm doing. Um, where am I going? Okay. So say for example, I wanted to twist to my right. The action on this side here, the action is one of introversion, as in it's an internal rotation to turn me in that direction. On this side, it, it's, it's an action of extroversion, of external rotation, of opening out in space. So the, the, the movement together is, is, a, is a dance, you know, it's a, there, is, there are two spirals going on, going in opposite directions. And if I can in, involve the sort of expressiveness of the hands, it tends to invite more of a whole body experience rather than, um, you know, working out the body as separate parts. Um, again, it's, you know, it's useful to understand that the internal rotation is a little more in the fore limb. Same as with the legs, it's the lower leg that does more of the outward touch. And then it's the thigh bones that do the external rotation. Um, <clears throat> so internal rotation and introversion on, on this side. And expressing with my hands helps. And I don't know if you can see, I've, I've got a mudra going on. That's, um, I, I consider mudras as sort of expressions of um, yoga rather than you know, shapes to make with your hands. And um, that action will support me because that's what it's, uh, that's what the style of touch does. It supports me away from my touch. This action of the radiating out action, the extroversion, and I can use the hand behind me, if you can see, I can use the, the point of contact behind me to continue to widen through that um, gives me a sense of the spiral staircase thing that, does, that inquiry was asking about because uh, when when you engage wholeheartedly from with your touch into earth and into space then the that wholeheartedness tends to invite the breath and the spine to join in so the general feeling is that the whole of the spine is involved breath by breath, and, and this is where the breath comes in, because um, what's the, the center of all of this stuff? It's breathing, it's the, it's the um, arrival and release of pressure around the heart, um, within the lungs, um, the, the breath needs to be accommodated by the rib cage, and this action will cause a gathering on one side of the ribs that relates to the base and to the release of the breath. So my left ribs are dropping through to my right sit bone, particularly as I release the breath. And that release, that release motivates the twist. Um, the way I'm feeling it at the moment, it's not locked in stone, but the arrival of the breath is a widening into the arm behind me which is an elevation of both sets of ribs because I'm, I, I need to use this arm for purchase. I need to use the front arm for purchase. So there's a, there's a widening that accommodates the inhale and there's a sort of gathering where the ribs um, empty uh, to their opposite pelvis as I release the breath. If I can allow that, the steadiness of that um, structural support as I, um, as I as I allow the breath to arrive across the heart then the widening across the heart motivates the twist a little more and the gathering through the ribs motivates the twist a little more 
So essentially, I breathe myself into the posture. But um, the, the, the actions of the arms, the actions of the limbs, describe my relationship to touch and space. Um, so that these responses are uh, natural responses to what I'm doing, as opposed to me doing stuff to my body. Um, a couple of minutes left. Let's try the other side. <clears throat> you can organize your legs any way you like. Um, so I'm now turning to my left, so my right arm is threading through into touch. If I do it with the release of the breath, then that sort of anchors the whole thing together, because the ribs will um, connect to their opposite pelvic counterpart. <laughs> um, it's... Uh, what am I talking about? It's um, it's a it's a relationship in space. You'll feel it through muscles and other things, and um, but that, that's not really what I'm interested in. I'm more interested in the functionality of that movement, the, the sweep, the the flow, the, the spiral, the, the nature. And if you can find that, then the ribs will behave, and the arrival, the, f the sense of the arrival of the ribs on the opposite side, is simply somewhere to rest, somewhere to rest the release of the breath. The other arm can externally rotate um, from the arm bone. You, know, you can't see what I'm doing. From the arm bone. So it's left, so it's not so much, it's not from the hand. It's more from the arm bone. So that um, I get a widening sense. And I, I want that widening to be across the heart um, so that I can continue to um, center beneath the heart for my support as I release the breath. I can continue to widen across the heart um, to receive the breath. And those actions are supported by my touch. So from the downward touch of the forearm, I widen from the uh, touch of the back hand on my back, I can widen. I breathe what I'm doing, I release the breath into what I'm doing. <sighs> So that the, um, well, this cross diagonal sort of feeling of support through upper and lower halves of the body um, becomes established in the breath. Good. So um, I have a, a couple of minutes left, I think. Um, this is Black Cat, in case anyone's not met, met Black Cat before. Um, he, he seems to, oh, that, that uh, means I've got two minutes left. Um, yes, he, he loves sitting on my lap. He's become quite a lap cat over the time he's been staying with me, him and Ginge. Um, yes. So, uh, yeah, Inquiry, um, Inquiry and Mark, I hope that was uh, useful. I hope that was something that um, I gave you some, some of what you were looking for. Uh, thank you so much. I, I really enjoy these sessions. I'm, I'm going to keep doing them. Uh, they're going to stay at 10 o'clock, I think. Um, it just gives me a bit more time in the day. It also, also means that I've got time next week to do my um, garden yoga week, uh, my second one. Uh, last, last time was really good. I was, I was very lucky with the weather. Um, there was uh, one day when it was a bit chilly and it happened to be a day when I um, a few enough people to, to be in my um, okay size living room. So it all worked out. Um, and uh, next week is due to be sunny all week. So I'm very fortunate. I usually am with these things. Um, so uh, I think there's a couple of places left. So please um, check it out. It's a, uh, there's, there's a Facebook page. And um, you can come for um, the, the, the sessions at 10.30 till 1, and uh, magical things happen in my garden. You can book for one day, you can book for two days. Uh, if you want to do the, the, there's a discount if you want to do all five days. And um, I've got a few people doing that. So um, there's only a couple of places left, I think. So do um, sign up if you're interested, or, or email me if you, if you want to uh, uh, check before you sign up. And... Um, Yes, I'll see some of you next week. That'd be great. 
So what else is going on? We've got our retreat coming up in Italy in September. Um, I'm not, don't think there's any spaces left, but I'll check with Abigail just in case. Okay, um, I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. This has been your Yoga Solutions Live. Um, <clears throat> oh, thank you, Abigail. Uh, Abigail's just put up the link there. So, um, yes, and do share this around. Uh, anyone you think that would benefit from um, working with whole body movements like that, which I think is basically the whole of the body work community. But um, anyone, anyone that um, you feel to share this with, please do. It um, makes a massive difference to me because um, I, I just, you know, I just want to share this stuff. So uh, any help you can give to pass this on. And, uh, and it, well, if it helps someone, then, then you'll be doing me a massive favor. So thank you. Okay, that's, uh, that's my time now, so I better go. Um, namaste. Lots of love. Bye.